I think it's fair to say that cicada mania is upon us, and depending on where you live, you are, by now, either inundated with the little critters or mystified by all the fuss. And if you're like me, you are beyond mystified by one thing we've been hearing about cicadas, that they are apparently edible. Well, we at Chicago Tonight try to never miss out on a culinary trend, so we send out producer Jay Shevsky to explore this new terrain. If the trees around you look like this these days, and you just can't wait to try a little cicada stew, resist the temptation to grab one off the tree. The serious cicada cook knows that it pays to be choosy. I would go with the smallest possible cicadas. If possible, grab the little beggars when they're coming right out of the ground, because that's when they'll be most fresh. David Hammond and Kathy Lambrecht had never tasted cicada before last week but it was probably inevitable. Kathy and I have sampled scorpions yes. and crickets, uh, eyeball tacos on Maxwell Street. Raccoon. Raccoon, snake. In preparing for this new culinary occasion, they learned that the reason you want to grab them right out of the ground is that they mature very quickly. Within a few hours of emerging, they look like this, with wings. You want one like this. The best time to catch the young ones is early in the morning, since they tend to come out of the ground during the night. Oh, here's one. And rising early, says David, is worth the effort. Because they're smaller, they're tastier, much like veal or a suckling pig. Now, we didn't begin our cicada hunt until late morning, so the pickings were slim. Luckily, David was here earlier and had a more successful catch. And to keep the young cicadas in your Ziploc bag from becoming old cicadas, there's a trick. If you pick a bunch of cicadas in the morning and uh, would like to cook them later on in the day before they perhaps begin developing into something else, you can refrigerate them and they'll stay fresh and delicious. So now, with an ample supply of suckling cicadas, it's back to the kitchen. The first step in the preparation of cicadas for eating is to uh, quickly boil them. It, uh, cleanses the cicada of any contaminants like dirt. Uh, it kills the cicada and also firms up the inside making it uh, more pleasant to eat. You should have stayed underground, boys. Once parboiled, the cicadas go into a cold water bath to stop the cooking. And then, to prepare them for today's first recipe, they're deep fried. And as you might suspect, it doesn't really take that long to cook an insect. Now, you could eat them plain at this point, but David has bigger plans. One thing we're going to make are these appetizers, call them cicadas on a stick. We end dive with a little spread of chevre, goat cheese. So what we're going to do is mount these cicadas as though they're emerging from a mound of chevre. Isn't that beautiful? Cicadas are said to have a flavor not unlike peanut butter. So as a special treat for the kids, Kathy prepares little celery sticks with blueberry jam hold the peanut buttery cicadas. Now tell me, what child wouldn't love coming home from school to be greeted by an after school snack like this? Cicadas with chèvre on an endive and uh, cicadas in blueberry jam on top of celery. I think I gotta try one. <laughs> May I? Please. Mmm, mmm. Could use a Pinot Noir. Now, lest you think that there wasn't a real cicada sitting on that goat, we offer an instant replay. And the chef evaluation? Mmm. Mmm. The richness of the chef balances mm. the crunchiness and the protein of the bug. So you have a nice balance of crisp and rich, and the endive there is kind of a bitter note to the sweetness in the cheese, and perhaps even a little residual the bug. Thanks for a tasty snack. Sweetie, you want some? But those were just the appetizers. Next, cicada sushi. This time, the parboiled cicadas are dipped in tempura batter, and then they're fried. David's wife, Carolyn, is the sushi rolling expert in the family, so she'll do the honors. In addition to the tempura fried cicadas, Carolyn adds carrots, wasabi, 
and then a jam paste and soy sauce. Carolyn may be the sushi roller, but she's more enthusiastic than her husband about actually eating the results. The carrot is a little comfort in there because the carrot is kind of hard and a little bit crunchy. So when you crunch down, you can think, oh, it's just the carrot. <laughs> and now, in case you won't have a chance to sample cicada cuisine, I'll do it for you. Here goes. I don't even know what's in there. <laughs> it tastes like a good normal. For Chicago Tonight, try it. Jay mm -hmm. Now, one of these perhaps? No. <laughs> David Hammond is a food writer and one of the moderators of LTHForum.com.